earlier today, I was scrolling X when I saw this post. As you can see here, the post was published by Mark Andreessen. DeepSeek R1 is AI's Sputnik moment. And I'm always curious to learn things. So I went to Grok and I was like, what is a Sputnik moment? The term originates from the launch of the Soviet satellite Sputnik 1 on October 4th, 1957, which was the first artificial Earth satellite. This event had profound implications. Basically, the Sputnik moment kickstarted the space race, intensifying efforts to reach the moon, culminating in the Apollo program. When used today, a Sputnik moment implies an event that motivates a society or a nation to take action in a new direction, often with a sense of urgency or competition. So in this video, we're going to explore DeepSeek. I'm going to show you how to create an account, and we're going to use it. And not only are we going to use it, we're going to compare it to how ChatGPT01 performs in a couple of tests. And before I go any further, the greatest difference between DeepSeek and ChatGPT is that DeepSeek is completely free. And the API version for coders that build apps off of DeepSeek is 96% cheaper currently than ChatGPT. That is a massive difference, which is why it's being called the Sputnik moment, because not only is it 96% cheaper if you're using the API and completely free if you're just going to use DeepSeek, but it's really, really good. To start using DeepSeek, all you have to do is go to deepseek.com and you'll see the blue whale. Then all you have to do is click start now, or you can get the app. In my opinion, I would see if you like it first and just click start now. The next screen will prompt you to sign up with a phone number or an email address, and then you'll get to the deep seek page. How can I assist you today? Now, as you can see here, this is the model that's really comparing to chat GPT 01 for reasoning. So you want to turn on deep think R1 and you can turn on search. Now, one of the biggest differences between DeepSeek and ChatGPT as it stands is that ChatGPT cannot currently search and reason at the same time, but DeepSeek can. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, please pick the top three AI related news stories of the day and turn it into an executive summary for entrepreneurs. And so we've come upon the major thing that separates DeepSeek and OpenAI as it stands is that you can see its reasoning and its thinking process. With ChatGPT and with the ChatGPT models, a lot of the time it just says thinking, or it'll kind of say a little bit about what it's doing, but it's not this transparent. And when it comes to this transparency, I think that OpenAI really needs to not underestimate this because one of the first things that I experienced as a first time user of DeepSeek was that I loved that I could see its reasoning and I could even learn from its reasoning, not just how I could prompt it better, but actually learn from its reasoning process. And this is what I'm talking about. So, okay, I need to create an executive summary of the top three AI news stories for entrepreneurs today, which is January 28th, 2025. And it says the 28th, but remember, they're in China. It's the 27th still for a few hours in Eastern time. Let me look through the provided search results to find the most relevant recent stories. First, I'll check the dates of the web page. The most recent ones are from January 23rd to the 24th. The user's query is for the day. So I should focus on the latest stories around that time. Looking at web page one, it lists the top AI news stories from the week published on January 23rd. The first story, there's OpenAI launching operator. So it goes through this whole process. And then it says, OpenAI launches operator AI agents for task automation. So I'm going to tell it, give me the top three news stories from January 27th. And again, when you see the reasoning behind what it gives you, you can prompt it better. So I should have said from today, January 27th, instead of just from today from January 27th only. Okay, I need to find AI related stories specifically from January 27th. Let me go through each of the provided web pages. That's too early, skip it. Web page two is published on January 27th. The content here talks about deep seeks advancements and other techniques. So now it's getting it right. 
So DeepSeek's AI breakthrough shakes global markets. Two, a U.S. Stargate project advances amid global competition. And then it has these, these key developments under each point, which I think is cool. It also has the sources for each development. And some of them are in English and some of them are in Chinese, which is interesting. Trends to watch open source versus closed models. DeepSeek's MIT license R1 could accelerate global AI democratization, pressuring Western firms. This is very interesting because originally the whole point of it being named open AI was for it to be open source and they closed it. I'm going to go to ChatGPT, and I'm going to tell it to do the same thing, but I can't, right? So again, O1 cannot reason and search. So it's going to tell me, oh, I don't have access to the recent news. So it's thinking. And when you click thinking, as you can see here, I'm pulling together the top three AI related news, but it's not showing its logical reasoning, so to speak. It's just telling you kind of what it's doing, but, but what it doesn't show is why it's doing it. Okay. So obviously it doesn't have access to today's news. What I like that it did though, is that why it matters to entrepreneurs. So it understood, although it can't access real time data, I think it understood more or less the assignment better. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it to turn one of my transcripts from YouTube into an article turn this YouTube transcript into a long form article that positions the speaker writer as a thought leader. Okay. I need to turn the YouTube transcript into a long form article that positions the speaker. First, I should structure the article in a way that highlights the speaker's expertise. Maybe be strong with a sort of introduction. Then break down the reasons why it's important. I need to make sure each section builds on the previous one, establishing the speaker as someone who's ahead of the curve. Including quotes from the transcript can help maintain the original voice, but I need to paraphrase some parts to make the article friendly. This is incredible how you could see its reasoning. I need to ensure the conclusion reinforces the urgency, encouraging readers to take action. This is also very important. So why 2025 is the pivotal year for live video and how to lead the charge. If there's one lesson the digital age has taught us, it's this. Adaptation isn't optional. It's, ex it's existential. As a business owner, your ability to stay ahead of trends will define your success in the coming decade. And right now, the most urgent trend isn't AI or even short form video. It's live video. By 2025, live video will dominate social media. Embrace it and you'll secure a competitive moat that even well-funded rivals can't replicate. Here's why and how you must act. So it goes into, um, you know, how Gary Vee predicts things or is ahead of the curve on certain observations, the AI threats, platform wars, LinkedIn's hidden opportunity, strategies to dominate live video in 2025. Conclusion, the clock is ticking. In 2018, and it's interesting that it, it mentions certain things from this video. In 2018, I ignored Carrie's TikTok advice. Today, I won't make the same error. By 2025, live video will separate the market leaders from the laggards. Start now, even if your podcast feels, even if your broadcast feels messy. So what I'm going, so what's interesting with DeepSeek now is that I could say the author is Sinead Murray. Can you search the web? and find relevant information that can make the article stronger. Okay, the user wants to strengthen the article by incorporating information. The original article positions Shanae as a leader in live video. First, I need to check with parts of the search that are relevant. Web2 shows her LinkedIn articles with high engagement, which, which can be cited to show her authority. Web page five has a LinkedIn live video where she discusses three steps to win on LinkedIn. That's directly relevant to her expertise. I should integrate these points to reinforce her authority. Okay, so then it adds like what could make it stronger. And then I'm going to say rewrite the article. Why 2025 will define your business. This is actually really good. In 2018, I ignored Gary Vaynerchuk's advice to embrace TikTok. By 2022, I watched competitors who did listen outpace me. That mistake cost me however many, right? It's kind of making a little bit of this up, but 
probably cost me a lot more and taught me a brutal lesson. The future belongs to those who act before the crowd catches on. Now, as AI reshapes content and corporations flood feeds with polished soulless posts, a new battleground emerges live video. Why 2025 is live videos make a break year. It has the main points that I talked about. And then in conclusion, the window is closing your move about Shanae Murray. And it even has a little bio here. That is very interesting. The intro is really good. I'm actually impressed. So let's go to ChatGPT and ask it to do the same thing. We're going to give it the same exact prompt. So turn this YouTube transcript into a long form article. Here's the transcript. Start going live in 2025. If you're a business owner, there's one decision you'll look back on in 2025, either with gratitude or regret, whether or not you started going live. The live video era isn't just approaching, it's here. Those who embrace it now will be ahead of the curve while others risk falling behind. The power of going live, why 2025 is the year of live video. It's interesting because this one's good too though. And I like how on ChatGPT's version, it says blue ocean opportunity. I use that term. Now, ChatGPT's version is really good too. I like the intro. It doesn't sound so AI. -y. It did mention context that I had here. It does use my three steps to win with live video, prioritize live video, start small, and leverage LinkedIn's built in features. So let's test it by saying, exactly what I told DeepSea. I'm gonna paste this exact prompt and let's see what it can do. So what's interesting is that it didn't bring back information about me, it just brought articles. So it didn't specifically search for Shanae Murray. And then I'm going to give it a third prompt. Just like I did with DeepSea, I'm gonna say rewrite the article. It kind of lost it. So this is interesting because ChatGPT's original was very strong, but when I asked it to search the web for specific things related to my name, it missed, and then it could not bring in that relevant information back into an article. So the next thing that I'm going to do is ask it for questions. I'm going to ask it for more polls like this. I'm going to screenshot a poll that did good on LinkedIn, got 2,500 votes. Then I'm going to ask it for more ideas like this one. I'm going to stop the search. I'm going to upload the screenshot. Give me more polls like this. Here is some engaging poll ideas similar to the Apple Maps versus Google Maps. Tech and apps. So Instagram versus Snapchat, Spotify versus YouTube, Waze versus City, Talk versus Instagram Reels, McDonald's versus Burger King, Amazon versus eBay, PayPal versus Venmo, eBooks versus physical books, dogs versus cats. Now let's see which ones ChatGPT does. Give me more polls like this. Same prompt. I like how in ChatGPT you see the image but it's not understanding the split. One thing that DeepSeek did understand was that when I said, give me more polls like this, it said, first I need to figure out what makes this poll ap appealing. It's comparing two competing services in the same category, which is a common and relatable topic. The options are clear and the percentage results show a strong preference, which might engage people to participate. So to create similar polls, I should look for other popular competing products, services, or brands, people, where people might have strong preferences. The topic should be relevant and current to ensure engagement. So it understood like the either or without me actually having to say it at all. So one more test. I'm going to share a screenshot of a comment on my YouTube channel, and I'm going to ask it for how I should reply. This is a screenshot of a comment on my YouTube channel where I showed how to make a video on Descript with an audio file. What should I reply? Hey, thanks for reaching out. Export times can vary depending on your project's complexity and your computer's specs. If you're working with a large file or have other apps running, that might slow things down a bit. Closing unused programs or lowering preview quality in Descript before exporting could help. If it's still unusually slow, feel free to share more details. I'd be happy to troubleshoot with you. That's really friendly and compassionate. Let's see how 401 replies. I'm going to give it the same prompt. 
with the same screenshot and let's see how they do. It's thinking and there's no details available so far. Export speeds can definitely feel slow sometimes, especially with longer files or if your computer's resources are maxed out. Generally, Descript's export process is a bit heavy because it has to compile your audio, video, and captions. It's pretty normal to experience a wait. If it's painfully slow, try closing the other apps while exporting, making sure your software is updated or lowering the video resolution. That should help speed things up a bit. I think it's a good response too, but I think the deep seek response, you know, was a little bit more friendly, a little bit more compassionate. So I don't know. What do you think? Share in the comments. Have you used deep seek? What have you used it for? And what do you think? Looking forward to hearing from you. Ciao.